I was always business minded, you know what I mean? I learned a lot from boxing. Put me around a lot of intelligent people, a lot of business minded people. Definitely all experience that you need to see, you know, especially if that's something that you want to pursue. So I'm excited. Today we have uh, a guy that I met a few years back. He was an uh, Olympic boxer, if I'm correct, uh, professional boxer, business owner. He is the one, the man, the legend, Brandon Gonzalez, who is here at the Care 27 podcast today. How are you doing today, Brandon? Good, man. Thanks for uh, having me on. Dude, for sure. I'm excited, man. I'm excited. Uh, you know, I'm a huge, I mean, I'm not, I never made it like you, but I'm, I love boxing, dude. So it's exciting when I get to interview somebody like yourself. Sure, man. I have to be here. Awesome, awesome, man. So, Brandon, um, tell me, uh, t- I know I know a lot about you, but, you know, I want people to get to know you. So uh, tell me a little bit about you, man. How did uh, everything get started, man, with, with you boxing and, and everything back in the day? Yeah, so, um, you know, I started boxing at uh, Capitol uh, Boxing Gym here in Sacramento, California, and probably going on 20 years ago, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, boxing was something that I always wanted to do, uh, but I just didn't have the opportunity to. So uh, I moved to Sacramento not too long after high school, and, you know, that was kind of the first thing that I did was I got inside of a boxing gym uh, after high school. I didn't have a lot of not a lot. I didn't have any goals, any goal setting or any direction I'm going. But one thing I know that I did want to do was uh, I wanted to get inside of a boxing gym. And that's when I found uh, Capital Boxing Gym. Awesome. Awesome. OK, so what, how were you when you started boxing? I was 18. Yeah, I was 18 when I started boxing. OK, mm-hmm. so a lot of people consider that kind of like late in the game, right? Like. Yeah, for sure, man. But, you know, um, I went in with the idea that I'd. I, I would be successful at boxing. And, um, you know, some people say I started late. I say I started right on time. You know, same thing with the way I left the game. They say I left the game early. I say I left right on time, man. So, you know, everybody has their own path. Uh, it's definitely, de- it definitely has its challenges starting late to when you're doing it from a, I'm a little kid. But, uh, you know, it has its plus side too. You're not as, uh, you know, you don't have all those amateur fights, hundreds of amateur fights, hundred round, thousands of rounds of sparring as a kid, putting that damage on your body. So it definitely has its plus and minuses going both, uh, both ways. I, I uh, yeah, there's a couple of things I like that you said there, you know, number one, uh, everybody definitely does, has their own path. And I think that's a problem that a lot of people don't, don't realize, right? Is, is everyone has their own path. Not everybody's going to be the same, you know? Um, I've, I've been doing this for so long. I've never made it like you did, but I've been doing it for so long, met so many fighters. And um, something that you said too as well, is like, you know, a lot of fighters have so many fights when they're so young, yeah. right? And it takes such a toll on your body. Yeah. I mean, I, I know fighters that I'm sure you know as well, that have had maybe a hundred, 200 fights before they were 18 sometimes. Yeah, for sure, yeah. man. I mean, you know, definitely, definitely takes toll. It's great experience. It's definitely going to serve you well, but you know, who knows what happens in the long run, you know, over, you know, 30, 30 plus year career from starting from a little kid. Yeah, no, I mean, not only does it take a toll on your body, but I think mentally it gets draining, right? That's why you see a lot of those kids uh, quit before they even go pro. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I've seen, I've seen guys who were like, like top 10 amateurs in the US who never go pro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, and again, everybody has their own path. so. It works for some kids, like Floyd Mayweather been fighting since he was three years old. You see the outcome with there. Uh, but there's plenty of kids that, like you said, got burnt out uh, before it was time to go pro. And, you know, so everybody has their own own way of doing things. And, uh, you know, that's when I had the opportunity to get inside of a gym. And that's what I did. And, you know, after a year of just boxing, uh, I was ranked number one in the country. So, uh, you know, I put I definitely put the work in uh, to get where I where I went. Yeah, so you definitely got up there in the amateurs. You made a uh, made a name for yourself uh, real fast, I guess, in a way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it just comes to hours of dedication, man. So I, I figured I couldn't I couldn't beat these guys in in years because they've been doing it longer. But what about hours? What about hours? So my whole entire days back then was just con- dedicated to boxing. Whether I was running in the gym. Uh, working out. If I wasn't doing that, I was at home watching film. So literally, you know, I'm talking 12 to 16 hours a day. I'm just consuming, consuming boxing. 
And I guess you can try to say, I felt like I was trying to catch up uh, yeah. to a certain point. Yeah, I can I can relate to that because uh, when I started, I started around the same time. Again, never made it like you did. But yeah, like, you know, like I felt the same way. I was always like feeling like I was playing catch up. So I constantly, that's all I did. Eat, yeah. breathe, and eat boxing, right? Watch a bunch of YouTube videos, see how everybody fights. And right, but right. I would go to the amateur fights when I wasn't fighting just to watch people fight. Yeah. Right, yeah. just to see how okay, let me see how these guys are doing. Like, you know, some of my fight them eventually. That's definitely all experience that you need to see, you know, especially if that's something that you want to pursue. Yeah, yeah, man. So so eventually, uh, when did you make that decision that you wanted to did you, I mean you kinda of already knew you wanted to go pro, but when did you go pro? And then how how did that go when you your pro career started? So I turned pro in, in two thousand seven and the only reason I remember that is because it was a year before the going for the Olympics. So, um, you know, just my handlers at the time, they thought it'd be uh, best to move, turn pro and, you know, skip the amateurs. Mm -hmm. uh, looking back at it, I was handling myself. I wouldn't have done that. I would have said, you know, uh, at least attempt to go for the team because a guy that ended up making the team uh, was a guy that I beat just the year before. So, uh, you know, I definitely would have had, a, I definitely would have had an opportunity to, to be on that team. but. Uh, you know, I don't look back at it. It is what it is. And like I said, I, I, I went the direction that I went. So I ended up turning pro in 2007. 2007. Okay. You had yeah. how many fights, uh, Brandon? About 20 something, 30 fights? Uh, as, as a pro? Yeah, as a pro. Uh, 20, yeah, 20, 21 fights, something around there. Okay. And it was yeah. 2000. It was 2000. Uh, it was the next Olympics. It wasn't eight because it was the class after that. So it was 11 that I turned pro. 2011 then okay yeah was I it think, yeah because hey, 2008 was athens right let me see no i think it might have been might have yeah, been 2008, yeah, 2007 yeah. no yeah was athens and then the that one was uh yeah Greece. yeah it was, it was definitely before 2011 yeah. because i met you around that time yeah so and, it was, uh, and you were a pro you, you were you were already pro when i met you i remember that so oh eight of See, man, I got, I got my time tables all messed up. The, the, the way, the way I met Brandon, I'll never forget either, because it was so cool. I was like, I remember I met you at Tony's house. Remember that in the garage? Yeah, in the garage, yeah. <laughs> uh, Yvette, right? Huh? It wasn't Yvette, right? From the the other, the, she like kickboxing Muay Thai. Yeah, she like knew you, I guess. And she, 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 worked for, uh, she worked at the gym together. And she's like, man, you got to come check out uh, my boy's setup. He's got, you know, so she took me over there. I think you guys were sparring that day, right? Yeah, so you brought uh, you brought some kid from your gym or whatever you were training. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then you asked me, you asked me to spar him or whatever. I don't know if you remember that, but. Uh, that's, how I, that's how I met Brandon. As I, as I said, I remember Tony's like, hey, yeah, this guy Brandon, he's a pro boxer. He's bringing some guy for you to spar. And I was like, in the garage? <laughs> uh, that, was, that was good times, man. That was, that was fun. That's how everybody starts riding the garage. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's how we started, too. Yeah, man. So that's that's how we met. And then, uh, man, I was so I thought it was so cool. I was like, oh, shit, this guy's coming over here. He, he trains with Andre Ward. I think you were already training with Andre Ward at the time. I think we were sparring. I don't think I was trained with Berger yet. Because, uh, yeah, it was a little bit later in my career when I started uh, um, boxing with uh, Berger. But I'd been sparring Andre since, you know, I'd, I was an amateur and he was just going to the Olympics. So, yeah, we've been boxing. And that's the thing, too, man. It's so great when you get to, um, sometimes even if you don't make it to those, you know, like that Super World Championship, but the, the <sighs> how do I want to say this? Um, like the moments you get to live in your life while doing this whole boxing thing, right? You get to meet all these great people. Like who can sit there and say, dude, I used to spar with Andre Ward. You know, yeah. like you can be older when you have your kids and you tell like your grandkids and stuff, you can tell them like, dude, I used to spar that guy right there. Yeah, yeah, no, no. You definitely meet a lot of contacts and a lot of resources. You know, that served me well today as a, as a business owner and as a trainer, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Still keep in contact with a lot, of, a lot of people that I came across in my career, so. You know, it definitely puts you in uh, in the in the position. And that's what I tell these young fighters, man. So you got to utilize that that celebrity while you have it. You know what I mean? I tell you know the pros, even the guys that train in my gym. You know, make all the contacts and resources you can while you're while you're hot. You know what I mean? Because it's going to serve you well when you go on to do other things. You know, uh, during and after your career. Yeah, man, absolutely. And one thing I think a lot of people don't realize, and I know you 
I don't know when you saw this because I know eventually you might you probably saw it, but boxing is when you go and then you're, you're the amateurs, it's still kind of fun. When you go to the pros, it's all business. Nobody cares. You know, like it, you, you can literally be someone who's not that good, but you have a name and you know somebody. So then it's like, you're going to get paid. I mean, it's look at It's all about the money, man. It's all yeah. about the money. Yeah. So it's all about the money. It's just another form of entertainment. You know, when it comes down to everybody's thinking, how much money can I make? Absolutely. Yep. yep. It's all a business, man. Everything's a business. And, uh, dude, and it's crazy too, because, like, I remember watching you fight. Like, um, I would, once I met you, I would always tune into your fights, right? I would always watch your fights. And, uh, I don't know when you started training with Andre Ward, but you guys did have pretty similar, uh, boxing styles. Like, you guys fought pretty similar, right? Like, you guys like to box. Like, when I yeah. watch you fight, a lot of people had told me that even in that, as an as an amateur, um, I just think we had similar attributes. Uh, we were both left-handed that fought orthodox. So there was just a lot of similarities in our, our physical characteristics. Uh, yeah, so I used to get that comparison, comparison yeah. a lot. Then, you know, we, we, you know, we both studied a lot of the same fighters, you know, uh, Michael Callum, Muhammad Ali, Sugar Ray Leonard. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I can see, um, I can see the comparison there. Yeah, movement, movement is everything, man, for sure. I mean, uh, you guys were all about that movement and putting yourself in the right place to hit people. Yeah, man, it's, it's huge, man. It's yeah. positioning and balance is, is, is everything in boxing, man. And I know that's something that you're huge on trying to teach at your gym all the time. You know, always trying to, you have to be conditioned to have that movement. That's the thing, oh, yeah. you know? Cause uh, that's why, like, I like for myself. I know, and I know you see me when that's why the does with those dude. I, when I'm when I'm out of shape, yeah. I'm moving nowhere. But then you see me when I'm in shape, I move. Yeah, <laughs> that's me, man. It doesn't matter how good you are if you can't maintain that for the duration of the fight, then you're gonna be in a lot of trouble. So, you know, a lot of call them sprinters, right? Guys that start fast, uh, but you know, as they wear down, they're a completely different fighter after you know during the second half of the fight. So. You know, conditioning is such a big part of, you know we do that i do that with my our fighters our clients everybody at the gym yeah no for sure so um moving on to that, that a little bit um i know eventually you, you had a lot of success in your pro career you're undefeated for a long time i think you only had like what like one loss or something like yeah that. one loss yeah yeah one loss um you, you fought for like a few belts right you had a few uh, belts i fought an ibf title eliminator which is the fight uh, if I would have won that fight, that was my only loss in my career. If I would have won that fight, I would have challenged for, I would have been a mandatory challenger to uh, for the uh, world title. Did you, I think if I'm correct, and tell me if I'm wrong, didn't you end up fighting like James DeGale? Is that who you fought? Yeah, to? yeah, that was the, that was the eliminator. Dude, that's, what I, that's what I'm saying, dude. It's, it's, uh, it, dude, that's big time, man. I mean, you were yeah. fighting some top, top talent, man. I mean, James DeGale was no joke. 80,000 people in, in, in Wembley Stadium at that fight, man. So. You went all the way to Europe, right? To fight yeah. in his hometown. Yeah. yeah, we were in England at the Wembley Stadium. Uh, you know, huge event, probably the biggest crowd then uh, in probably the last 20 years. So it was a it was a huge event, man. Yeah, man. I mean, you want to talk about pressure. You want to talk about being able to handle that. It's like, it's yeah. like you know, people uh, people want to take chances. People want to take, you know, want to do things in life, man. That's what, that's what it's about, right? I mean, shoot, you flew over... You know, thousands of miles to go to somebody's hometown. Yeah. Probably what, like 99.9% .9 of those people were all cheering for him. Yeah, <laughs> Nobody cares. I, I had a lot of, I had a lot of fan support over there. Oh, you know, did you? Okay. He's, he's kind of split down the middle uh, over there. Some people, you know, he comes off as low, arrogant, cocky to some of the guys. So you know, okay. guys. But yeah, for the most part, though, the 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 majority of the crowd was definitely, uh, you know. Okay, yeah, no, and, and like I said, I mean, he's no joke. He's definitely, uh, I mean, he. I think he ended up winning the title eventually, right? So I think. Yeah, he ended up going on to beat, uh, I want to say maybe, uh, I think he went on to beat Darrell. You know, the, Carl, the, the, it was a, a the eliminator was for the, the challenge, Carl Frock and uh, I can't remember the guy he fought, uh, but Carl Frock ended up winning and then he ended up vacating the title, so. Uh, got it, got it. That's yeah. another guy. That's another guy that was pretty good. People forget oh, yeah, Kyle yeah. Frog. Frog was good, man. For sure, for sure. Uh, but man, that's so. So yeah. So you did that. You had all that success in fighting, you know. And uh, you do, dude. You did some amazing things from someone who started at eighteen. You know, in Sacramento, nobody really knows fighters out here in, in Northern California, honestly. Besides like Andre Ward, really. In, in you know, in uh, what's his name, Corrales. That's about yeah. it. Yeah, it's been a while, man. Since uh, you know, Sacramento's a fight town, man. So. 
you know, we got a lot of young guys that are coming up and, you know, guys like Xavier Martinez. Uh, so hopefully, you know, he, he'll be able to get to that pinnacle and, uh, you know, bring bring some uh, awareness back to the city. Yeah, that's that's what I would love to see that, man. I would love to see some fighters ever from, you know, from like the 209 area. I know that they know the Diaz brothers, but I'm talking about in boxing, you know, like from 209 all the way up to like SAC area. It'd be nice to see some boxers kind of. Um, start getting the credit that they deserve because I feel like they don't sometimes. They they focus so much in SoCal out here. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of talent on, out in, in NorCal for sure. Um, but yeah, as far as that, I know eventually. Um, what what made you? So here we go. We go. We go into the next phase of your life, right? Um, you made that decision to retire. Uh, number one, what made you decide to retire, and then what made you want to decide to open the gym? Yeah, so it it kind of came hand in hand, man. And with the retirement, the easiest way that I put it is. Um, you know, where I was at in life, I, I kind of had to put everything on a scale. And I said, look, these are the reasons to keep fighting. These are the reasons to settle down and, uh, you know, move forward with the next phase. And, you know, I put everything on the scale and just tipped in favor of, uh, you know, not coming back. And that's the decision that I ultimately went with and stuck with it. Um, you know, at that time, I did have the two businesses. I had the nonprofit that we were running. I had the gym. Uh, you know, I was being naive when I first opened the gym, um, thinking that, hey, I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll take some time off boxing, a few months, get it set up, let it run itself, and, you know, go back to fighting. That wasn't the case. You know, I'm still, as you know, I'm still involved on the day to day, every day. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, just, you know, just all part of that. And, that, and that's mainly what it came down to, you know. Uh, financials obviously were a big part of it spending time with my family i'm leaving camp leaving for camp for months at a time missing my kids growing up and going to school and stuff like that so a lot of you know factors like that ended up being the reason why i stopped coming i i decided not to keep fighting uh, it's hard man it's hard you you have to make those decisions right and it's like do i want to keep going do i want to keep doing it? i mean you see guy, even guys like mayweather they're like you know why am i gonna keep putting my body through something yeah do something else and spend time with my kids and my family Right. Yeah, um, you know, it's like money is nice, but you can make money other ways and still have that, um, you know, you don't want to live life just for money and then you don't get to spend time with those people you want to, you want to start a family, right? You want to have all those things. It makes sense. Absolutely. You know, when you, when you're single, you got nothing else. Yeah. I mean, you might as well keep doing it. Right. Yeah. So, um, but then as far as the gym, so you, I know, um, <laughs> here we go again. I got, I remember when uh, Brandon started the gym again too. I had literally just moved to uh, where I live now by golf, and Brandon had just started the gym in Sacramento. He was sharing, I think he was sharing the gym with somebody else, right? Uh, yeah, so we, we were talking about the night, the T Street. The very, yeah, the very. Yeah, oh, one. yeah, so, man, it's, uh, so yeah, so we ended up, uh, you know, I just did an interview, I was talking about this yesterday. Uh, we ended up um, starting the gym uh, inside of a, uh, it's like a, Sandra Augustine is probably the person that I have to credit most for where we're at today because she really gave us a start. She had the gym set up. She offered me to uh, train clients in the space that she had. She had multiple rooms where she did different um, different fitness, uh, fitness activities. So she had like a boot camp, she had a yoga, she had a strength room. And so in one of the rooms was a yoga studio uh, and half of their space wasn't being used. So you figure the room was about a thousand square feet, cut that in half. And that's kind of the space that we had to work with. And she said, you know, why don't you train uh, some clients, uh, train some other clients doing boxing training. And I kind of just looked at the area, see what we had available. Like, you know, we can, uh, we can set up a gym here. You know, we kind of, not a, necessarily a gym, but an area to where we could do group training versus personal training. Um, so she was all for it, man. And she said that we could do it as long as we, uh, a a created a space for her, uh, also to train her clients. So she could offer her clients something uh, and another addition to her gym. So that's kind of how it started, man. We started training her people and then we were doing things for the nonprofit, uh, at that time, training, uh, partnering with other, uh, organizations, bringing kids over for youth camps and things like that. And then it kind of just fast forward to where we started bringing our own clientele. We were training her clients and it kind of just took off from there. Now, um, was it hard for you to make that transition from, I mean, even though as a boxer, you're kind of like a private contractor, right? But you still have a lot of people around you that help you. Was it hard for you to transition from boxer? I'm just training, fighting, eating, sleeping, boxing. Now I'm going to 
sleeping and, and, and eating business, right? So was it hard to make that transition? Yeah, you know, uh, not 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 so much, man, because um, you know I was always I was always business minded. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then as I learned, I learned a lot from boxing. You know, you know, uh, accounting, taxes. Uh, you know, having having uh, having someone do your books and having a manager. Just I learned so much about like boxing was my education. You know what I mean? It put, yeah. me around, it put me around a lot of intelligent people, a lot of business minded people. And I and really, I just kind of soaked it all in, man. I, I soaked it all in and it served me well when it came to uh, running a business. And again, that's trial and error. You learn as you go too. Yeah. But then my wife, my wife is, you know, really intelligent. She college graduate, master's degree. So a lot of that is also her acting coming in on that side to where um, you know, we were we were kind of learning learning together with her, with my background and her education. Everything kind of just worked well. Yeah, yeah. So no, and and I noticed that about um, about you guys. You know, that's you know to bring that up. Um, is is your relationship seems to be? You guys seem to have like a really good relationship. I mean, everybody goes through the stuff. That's no, that's obvious. But you guys have a great relationship where you guys not only you guys have the relationship with you your kids but even a business relationship right she seems to be very involved with everything yeah uh, that, that's that's a great you know i think that's uh something that people forget is you have to have that very supportive partner right because she's been there in your corner since you were a boxer to now a business owner right yeah forever you know she's always she's always played a part in you know everything that that i've done my career and even business now she's played a, a major role Dude, and, and it's hard because uh, it's hard just to already be dating a boxer. Now it's harder to be dating someone who plays professionally like you did at the time, yeah. right? So you're like eating, breathing, boxing, like, you know, I'm sure the relationship was good, but there's times when it gets hard because you're just constantly training. You're leaving for camp, doing things, right? Then you leave boxing and then you start a career as a business owner, right? And it's, that's hard too. It's Absolutely. It's a lot of work and so it's it's definitely um definitely congratulate you a lot on you know picking a partner that definitely was so supportive and has been there for you and is uh definitely trying to help you out with everything you know that's awesome yeah thank you, man. you know? and uh you guys have how many kids now two, two kids. yeah two kids. Uh, two kids that's awesome man no that's great um but yeah i mean eventually i know you left that gym you went over to um the last gym where i when i met you again with denzel and then mm -hmm. now you moved in into another bigger gym right next to the, down the street, right? So you guys just continue to grow now, man. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's the idea. That's what you want, right? You want growth. And, uh, you know, this is our third gym that we opened up. We've expanded each time. So we started out that, that uh, sharing the space at 19th and T. Uh, we moved over mm -hmm. to Sickman Broadway. That was in Suite B. Uh, we were there for a little over two years. And then, again, we expanded over to... Uh, Sweet D, which is a sweet move, same address, which is a sweet move. Uh, so we went from about, I'd say probably like five to 700 square feet to 2,500 square feet. And now this one is 4,500 square feet. So you yeah. can tell the difference. It's definitely bigger. <laughs> Absolutely. And there's, you know, we have an a, a Olympic size ring in there. Uh, we went from 20, 20, about 20 bags to 35 bags in this new location. Uh, might be more once you include the speed bag and double end bag. So, yeah, man, of course, a lot more space. We have a strength area now here. We have a uh, strip of turf. We have bathrooms. We have everything that you need for a full facility. So it's great because it's, uh, you know, it has top of the line. Um, I can never say it's anemones, but, you know, it's still that, you know, because of the fact that all of our trainers are fighters, former or current, it still has that gritty feeling, that gritty training from that you would get at a at an old school, you know, grimy boxing gym. Yeah, yeah, which is which is great, right? I mean, uh, and for those that worry about COVID, it is very clean. It's just yeah, yeah, yeah. You get that idea, but it is very clean. I see Brennan's gym. I actually, I uh, I train at Brennan's gym. I go to Brennan's gym, and uh, I'll tell you guys one thing. Uh, and uh, I know he'll give me crap because he hasn't seen me, but uh, there's really no excuses to not go to his gym. 
uh, mostly if you're close by because the guy has a six, like a 5 a.m. class, 6 a.m. class, 7 a.m. class, 8 a.m. class, 12 o'clock class. I mean, there's they have so many classes um, that if you're really looking to get into boxing, it's such a great gym to be if you're in the you know SAC area anywhere. But I know I met guys, man. I mean, I drive from from Gaul, so it's about 30, 35 minutes, give or take, in the morning when I drive out there. Um, and I met, and I and I still drive out there. I don't mind. I I chose to I chose to go there, right? So um, there's guy. There's a guy I met. I know that comes from I think Modesto. I think it is. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So I mean, definitely. Uh, you know, I will say, guys, like it's it's definitely a gym that people want to work out. I mean, you got people driving in an hour just to go to Brendan's gym. So yeah. he drives. It's it's Modesto. It's quite. It's further than that. He drives about a little over two hours each. Or maybe, yeah, I, I don't know how far it is. But yeah. uh, that's, uh, yeah, so we got people from Modesto. We're in a real central area, which is good. So we got people from Davis, uh, Galt, Lodi, Elk Grove, Natomas, Roseville. So, yeah, man, we're we're in a really good location. Yeah, no, for sure. No, you guys are, like, right in the middle, and it's, it's, it's awesome, yeah. man. Um, yeah. The classes, like, you're trying to lose weight, you can do it. You're trying to get better at boxing, you can do it. I mean, yeah. there's yeah. one-on-one coaching. I mean, Brandon, you tell them, bro, I'm over here selling your gym for you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, think about it, it's your learning authentic boxing technique that's going to be a form of self-defense, a form of self-confidence, self-awareness. And then you also get the fitness aspect. And so you don't have to change boxing training so much to what to lose weight and get in fantastic condition fantastic shape right like you know we want to we want to reinvent the wheel but you know you look at a fighter you look at a slim muscle you know the, uh, the fighter is the modern day you know body type that people want you want to be slim not a lot of body fat you have striations where you can see your muscles you got a nice abs uh toned arms you know that's kind of the modern day for i think men and women and uh, you can do that with the type of training that we do. Sure, we don't have you work on your footwork for six months like I would with a real fighter, but you learn the you learn the sweet science and you still get in incredible condition at the same time. You know, speaking of shape, we're getting ready to launch a, uh, our, our next challenge. We've had these uh, fight burn six week challenges going on. Uh, got put on hold because of COVID. This is gonna be the first one post COVID. So uh, we're gonna announce all the details come up Monday, but uh, what we have released, the winner of the entire challenge is gonna get a thousand bucks. So, you know, that's that's gonna be a big deal. This challenge is gonna have a lot of, uh, a lot of special things going on with it. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's gonna be the first of its kind. So we're gonna be talking, giving out full details on Monday, man. I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. Awesome. Now, now, Brandon, and uh, because I wanna make sure people know, I'm gonna try to have this out by next week, so. Um, you know, is this challenge gonna uh, be for members only, or can you, if you're not a member, can you also sign yeah. up? Yeah, absolutely. Everybody's gonna be able to uh, participate in it. Um, so yeah, so it's not limited to just members. We, of course, we want all of our members to get it, but we want <clears throat> people to come in. And the only thing about this one is, it's gonna be more. Uh, it's gonna be like a like an, an invite or qualify because it's gonna be a big challenge. And we're going to need people that are motivated, that want to stick to the plan, that want to, that are serious about achieving their fitness goals because it's going to affect us as a gym. And, you know, I can't get too much into it, but that's pretty much the detail. That's okay, man. That's okay. Yeah. Whatever insight, whatever insight yeah. I can get. <laughs> yeah, no, we need, we need people that are going to be, uh, you know, team players. I'll just say that we need team players and people that are serious about, uh, you know, competitive and serious about losing weight. No, oh, that's awesome, man. That's that's great. Yeah, I mean, and and I've seen some of the results from those challenges you've had before. You know, uh, yeah, dude, yeah. I've seen the results uh, when Rob did it a few years back. That yeah, was Rob crazy. was the first, the first winner. Uh, I don't want to. Dude, he yeah. looked lean. I was like, dang, okay. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. So yeah, Rob's a beast, man. He's still there. He's been he's been there over two years, probably longer than that, man. Yeah, Rob's been with us for a while. Yeah, man. So no, I mean, it's it's cool. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, I, I definitely, I, I box for the gym, man. I love, I think it's so great. Uh, if you're trying to get in shape, it's such a good gym. If you're trying to learn how to box, right? And like Brendan said, yeah, you're not gonna, he's not gonna put you to, you know, six months of full work and do this yeah. and that. But I mean, you guys aren't there to go be fighters, right? Now, if you're trying to be a fighter, he does have a program for you. Sure. Right, Brandon? You do have yeah, a program. Yeah, yeah, no, man. We just launched the academy and the, the reason behind that was 
I was spreading myself thin, trying to train different fighters at different times. And so I said, you know what? I can't do it anymore. I'm trying to run the business. I'm trying to teach the classes. I'm trying to train these fighters. So I just said, look, we're going to make this academy. Anybody that's interested in sparring, competitive training, this is where you're going to do it at. So I got people from the gym. I got pros. I got amateurs. I got our youth all training at the same time. And basically, the idea is to create a culture. I, I, I learned how to build a stable from Virgil Hunter. Like I, 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 I seen him do it with Andre and then have all types of different types of world class fighters come you know, how to uh, target specific weight classes. Uh, so I really soaked that in from him. And that's kind of the, and then it's the culture, right? It's the culture, it's the competitiveness that you want to have all throughout the gym. The gyms I trained that you couldn't even, you could you wouldn't show up if you weren't in shape because you didn't know what days you had to box. Somebody had to fight coming up. You would have to get in there, help them get ready for their fight. So people would not come to our gym unless they were in shape because you're talking about guys that may have 500 records or not the best record, but they could still fight. So they would bring in world, world champions and these guys would be handling world champions and sparring. That's how competitive the gym was to where you had to be at least 70% condition before you can come or you were going to get hurt. There's no question about it. Yeah, no, I know. I know what you mean. I mean, I've been there. I've been there. Yeah, so yeah. I know how that goes. And, yeah. uh, and another thing you say there that I kind of... Um, you're pretty correct about it, is sometimes people look at records and record doesn't tell the whole story sometimes. Yeah. And sometimes also look at rec people look at records and they're like, oh man, you know, like that guy sucks. Yeah. Compared to you, that guy still kick your butt though. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm Ooh. saying? Like a lot of those guys that don't have the best records sometimes, they still work their butt off. They still they're still pretty good in the gym. Now you also have what you call, and I know you know this, there's guys out there that are gym fighters. Yeah. Somehow they can beat anybody up in the gym. But when the lights turn on, somehow they yeah. choke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like I say, everybody has their has their path, man. And yeah. that's one hundred percent true. There's guys that uh, do well in the gym, don't do as well in the fights. Uh, yeah, for sure, absolutely. But for sure, um, no. I mean, that's good to know for people to know. You know that if you do. Um, you know, you have the, the fitness version of it. You have the boot camp. You have a lot of different classes. And now yeah. you're also including a, more of a fighter style kind of class. And, yeah. and you know, that way, if you if anybody does want to start trying to train, you know, want to learn how to fight and actually go compete, you know, I know yeah. Brandon's big on that. Um, and Brandon won't put you in a situation where you're going to go out there and get hurt, right? I mean, no, make sure that. That's your job as a trainer, man. I was raised by guys that understood, understand that you can die in training. So, um, you know, I take that with anything that I do with the programming that we develop for the clients, for the regular gym members to the fighters, uh, you know, I take that in consideration uh, with everything that, you know, I create for the gym. For sure. No, for sure, man. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, man. So, well, I'm excited, man. I'm excited to see what's coming. I'm excited to hear about this whole boot camp thing, um, you know, uh, if anybody wants to come train there, where can they find you, man? We're at 600 Broadway, Sacramento, California, USA, man. We're right there in the in the in the heart of the city, right outside of downtown, uh, on Broadway, uh, central area. We're right off every freeway, so there's no no excuse to not get to us. Uh, yeah, 600 Broadway, man. And you awesome. know they're doing a lot of things, a lot of development in that area. Uh, so it's really, uh, it's really looking upside for the next five, 10 years there. What's, uh, what's also your, uh, your website so people can check out your website? Uh, it's flawless boxing fit short for fitness.com flawless boxing fit.com phone numbers, eight, three, three, I can box. You guys hear that? Eight, three, three, I can box. <laughs> Can't box. Don't call it. <laughs> want a box? You want a box? Want a box. If you want a box, call it. Uh, uh, Every Saturday at uh, 10 a.m. we do a beginner's intro class, which I think is probably one of the best things about our gym. Uh, we take people that are completely new to boxing. It's a free session, so anybody can come, uh, and we teach them, you know, the sweet science from the ground up, folks, in our footwork, how to wrap your hands, boxing stance, proper punching technique, introducing them to our our, our number system, which is one through ten which sounds complicated, but it's really simple uh, once you get to know it. Yeah, sometimes Kevin Stills gets lost, but I got, yeah. I've been punching the head a lot, so it's all good. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's really not that hard, guys. Um, once you get the hang of it, you know, um, it's fun. And like Brendan says, it's just, 
uh, a matter of you getting in shape, right? Once you're fit and you start getting the hang of it, it's just not not as bad. And then, but uh, dude, I'm excited. I'm happy for you. You have the whole business going on, you know, from from uh, boxer from, from boxer to you know fighting for championships to fighting in eighty thousand stadiums with eighty thousand people, you know, to running a business from from scratch, you know, and yeah. you're doing great things, man, for the Sacramento area. I know you're trying to also. You know, help out a lot of young boxers go pro and in promotions and stuff like that. So uh, I'm excited to see where you're going, man. Because I've met you since I met you 10 years ago in that garage. It's been a long ride and it's been yeah. good for you, man. Sure, man. Yeah. But the idea behind the gym is anybody that comes, walks through those doors that has a goal, our um, objective is to create that goal for them. So whether they want to lose weight, they want to become world champion. You know, they want to just get a little more confident, learn self-defense. You know, we have a program for that. And that is our, uh, you know, that's our fashion is helping, helping you achieve those goals. So. Awesome. Well, Brandon, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time, man. I uh, really do, because I know you're a busy, busy guy. So I'm Thanks. glad that you were able to take some time. Just talk to me, have you in the show. Uh, you know, show's growing. Uh, it's been blessed that it's been going as well as it's going. And I, don't, I just do this for free, dude. I make no money out of it. Just love to, just love to talk to people and uh, put it out there, man. See what happens, you know? That's how it starts. So for sure, man. I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, I will see you at the gym soon, I promise. Thanks, Ken. Hi, man.